What's going on, y'all? Today's guest is Eva Alexio Rio. She's the founder and CEO of Feta Booking Agency, a talent agency and an artist management company, which she has run since 1996. She's also a member of NITO, N-I-T-O, the National Independent Talent Organization, where they're currently fighting for independent talent agencies, independent music uh, management companies, right, where they're fighting for their their workers and the artists that they represent and trying to save the live music industry ever since COVID hit the live music industry has been dying venues are disappearing small companies are going out of business people are doing different things like great people are leaving the music industry because there, there is no touring industry at least right so eva is helping with needle helping fight for that cause she's also a professor at northern vermont university before that, she has taught at Drexel University. So she's taught music business for at least eight years already. Uh, she's an amazing guest. It was a really fun conversation. We talk about how you can get involved with NITO and help fight for the Restart Act, the Save Our Stages Act, and which we don't talk about this in conversation because this was recorded a while ago. We also talk about the Hits Act. Uh, so many, many ways you can help save the music industry. Uh, jump into Nito for a second. Uh, yes. Tell me about you know, like the, so the National Independence independent talent organization tell me about that we so nito is um has been founded by um the fantastic uh agents like stormy shepherd and frank riley and uh there's nadia mass and house and um there's there's a collective of fantastic agents that came together um to treat this kind of like uh, a place for us to have a foundation to, to, to get assistance from, or to lobby to get assistance from the government and to be heard by the government. And they're doing a fantastic job. I mean, I, I'm very proud to be involved. I'm a member, I'm one of the co-chairs for the booking committee, um, which we helped to navigate available information for um, the members on drive-ins and live stream options and mm -hmm. who's opening what, where, when, and why, you know, things, mm -hmm. just options. Um, but um, it's also been a very active place for people on the members uh, board to reach out to people within their state in Congress and constantly sending um, letters to pay attention to the music industry people that are in need. I and mean, we're at 100% loss and yeah. it's, it's, it's very important. And the companies that are part of NITO, they're included in the, the Save Our Stages Act? Um, yeah, and the Restart Act. So a lot of it is, it, it's, it's, I mean, NITO is obviously its own, its own, its own group but we're all working together. I mean, like, obviously, like, the NEO supports NEVA, and it's, it's all supposed to be intertwined. Um, but we are a, a membership organization that mm -hmm. is structured to help save, the, you know, the music industry as managers, agents, crew. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Because yeah, I saw, in the, I, I was went through the website, through the Nito website, and I saw the, the actual bill for for Save Our Stages. I was reading that before we started. Yeah, I saw it's for producers, promoters, talent, talent representatives, and live venues. So I was, I was assuming that your that organizations, companies within Nito, probably fall under talent representatives. Yes, right. So we're you know, and if we're the talent representatives, but we there's more than that in NITO. There was the talent agents, there's the managers, um, you know, social media, it opened up with publicists and social medias and, you know, there's everyone that's independent mm -hmm. um, can be a part of NITO to be heard by Congress in Washington right now. Gotcha. Um, and of course, it's also, you said you went to the website, the website also has a really awesome resource page. Mm -hmm. Yeah which is a part of like, you know, the, the different things. I don't know about you, but during this process, I found that in the beginning, it was very hard to find out what resource you have as a company, you know, mm -hmm. especially like 
a lot of us, what do we fall under, you know, I mean, we fall under being independently owned. So self-employment doesn't have a lot of benefits when it comes to, no. you know, maternity leave, for example, there's no benefit no. there or nothing, no. you know? <laughs> no. So um, I found it very hard in the beginning to navigate what information I needed as someone who is an independent company that's self-employed and you know what it means for employee if you have employees and how many and how much do you have to earn a year to be considered in this infrastructure so that resource page has like you know all of these different elements and variables that could help people mm -hmm. navigate what is actually eligible for them and there's like a lot of relief funds that are available out there and putting it in a place where your members can find it is super important yeah absolutely what can people do so people that are music fans people that are artists um people that are students or anybody what can people do to help support uh nito and what you guys are doing in your efforts write your local congress people tell them how important live music is um, mm -hmm. I mean, the more Congress hears from people, the, the more likely they are to not just um, acknowledge that it exists and we're here, but to actually take a, a, a fierce consideration and, and, and put things in place to save the music industry. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, it's, it's funny how... Um, how many people are affected in the music industry. I mean, like there's, there's crew and there's staging people and there's, there's the sound engineers and there's the agents, the managers, the actual artists. Then there's the, the staging, there's um, the van rental or bus rental or, you know, RV rental companies. It's so affected. Mm -hmm. um, and it employs a lot of people. Right. I mean, there's people depend on the music industry to have a job yeah um so and they don't know anything else right your congress people yeah 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 tell them it's important <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> yes cool. and I'll, I'll share that in the in the show notes for this episode as well and a link cool. to where people can uh find yeah, all, if all the board founders are listed there um it is a membership only um organization but um for promoters any promoters are listening I'm, uh, my email is, uh, is attached, um, and I think Margie and Tim's as well, to the website to inform us of any kind of a reopening, streaming, um, and we like to provide that to the members, so that way it gives people an opportunity to do things during this very unforeseen um, and unclear time. Yeah, I'll, and I'll definitely share that. Um, what, what are you... I guess, what's the, what is the word when shows might start back up, at least on a consistent basis or tours? Is it still kind of in limbo or what are the conversations like? I, I mean, as a non-scientist, non-doctor, um, <laughs> we have been putting things into place on 2021. I, I can't speak for all agencies and agents because I know that some are... Um, are doing the same and others are concerned that's not realistic it's really hard to know because we're five months into this and it's not clear that we would have been even here now so like right. the the fact that we are here is is daunting in itself mm -hmm. so to think that a year from the start time yeah. we wouldn't have a start time for the, for the united states not a start time for everywhere yeah. in the world, but um, that we would still be in this situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. I think when we first started, we are probably thinking, oh, it's gonna be like a month or two, and then we'll start shows back up. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, Florida did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Florida did. I was, uh, I was slow. <laughs> Texas. Um, we, uh, it, as in FEDA booking, we do have things in the books for the spring, early spring 2021. Let's, yeah, let's, that's, let's hope that ha that's hope that happens. Yeah, and there's definitely like um, a conversation being had with those agents, uh, with those promoters, excuse me, and my agents about okay, if if it can't open fully, can we look at some? Can we can we talk about maybe opening and advertising it at half capacity now? Um, yeah. 
and just watch it type of thing. But I think the idea is for us, anyhow, um, we were eager to have things on the books rather than not have it on the books mm -hmm. because we assumed if we're still dealing with this a year out from the start period, then we have more things to worry about than rescheduling another tour. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> a lot more things to worry about. Yeah. Um, so I know, I know we're at your, your time limit. To me, ask you just a quick uh, two rapid fire questions and then we'll ask yeah. you the final question, ask everyone. Sure. But tell me about the first concert experience that you've been to. So, so it was, you should say first concert or your first memorable concert experience. Oh, well, my first concert and memorable. So my, so my parents are, are immigrants from Greece and um, oh. they're, they're, they're very, they're very like uh, strict. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to maybe do a lot of things that other kids were early on. But my first notable concert, which it was a big deal because I can go to a concert was New Kids on the Block, which my dad stayed in the parking lot the whole time. <laughs> and um, it was it was when they were they were just like, like I think there was like 500 people there because it was Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Mm. Um, and then my second most memorable concert, which is, and still probably um, accurate in terms of things I listened to was uh, Lollapalooza because Pearl Jam was playing like I oh, wanted nice. to go and my and um Jesus Mary Chain I wanted to go because of those two artists and um my, we we basically uh got like as far up as we could and then like um we walked the rest of the way and I think we caught a ride with like maybe a stranger <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, definitely things that I would kill my children if they ever thought about doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't listen and, to this. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was awesome because it was it was Love Lusa, and it was like Ministry of Destruction, and you know, Jesus Mary Chain, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which I'm not a huge, I, I'm not I'm not a fan of, but they weren't the reason I was there. Mm -hmm. And um, later, as an industry person, I was talking to Don Moeller, who works for Paul Jam still. Mm -hmm. their agent and he and I were speaking about that about how that was one of my my favorite experiences as a as a kid going mm -hmm. to a show and he was telling me um and I don't know who dropped off but someone dropped off at Lollapalooza and that's how Pearl Jam was positioned on there but before that they were drawing like you know like 50 75 kids at clubs and how he wow. really just believed in this artist and developed and I, I remember like hearing this and thinking man this guy's awesome <laughs> like just hearing this story about how much he believed in this this grungy band you know what i mean and yeah and of course like i got to see pearl jam again when i was pregnant with my daughter actually 10 years ago 11 years ago 10 and a half years ago whenever yeah she's 10 now so um and uh social distortion was on that tour so i'm friends with social distortions manager and i went to see him and i went to see um because Pearl Jam was playing too. And mm -hmm. I remember um, they came off the stage and, and like said hi. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, <laughs> so I never geeky over a band. The only time I've ever gotten geeky over a band was them. And when my artist toured with Foo Fighters, um, my artist May toured with Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl, we were in Houston and no one was backstage. I don't remember if there was a thing like, I don't, but I, for all those shows, I don't remember anyone being backstage. Mm. And I was watching May and Dave Grohl came and stood next to me to watch them. And I was just like, don't <laughs> look over. Don't, look don't act over. weird. <laughs> don't, you're, you're, you're acting weird in your head. Don't mm. look weird. So, and I remember he said hi and I was just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those are like my two. And because I loved, like I grew up, that was my teen years, like Jesus Mary Jane and all of those like grungy bands and, mm -hmm. you know, like, it, it, you know, so I was, it was kind of like in my, uh, my geek mode. <laughs> <laughs> those good ones. I saw Pearl Jam at Voodoo Fest in, in New Orleans. I love Pearl Jam. Yeah, they're so good. Really so good. good. And it's so funny because um, I just love their story. They, they never stopped making music, you know, it just, and their fans are like super culty. So even when they yeah. were in their mainstream arena years, um, they were still producing music and they still had their strong cult following. And mm -hmm. 
And totally. they put out their own, they don't put out their own music that, that, you know, I mean, like, they kind of just did things regardless of any kind of, I don't know, um, I guess norm, you know, mm -hmm. and they just kept going. And, uh, very, very punk rock. Yeah, totally. Super yeah. punk rock. Yep. I love it. Me too. Well, what is something that you'd like to see change uh, in our industry? Oh, hmm. That's a multi-layered question. <laughs> um, so much for easy, fun questions, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would love to see people give more people a chance um, and people to understand, or not understand, that's not the right word, but maybe to give, give, the, give the benefit that just because they don't know someone or they've never worked with them before that that person is definitely worthy of their time mm -hmm. and it's a busy industry and we do tend to talk to people more when they have something we need and um, listen less when we think that they don't have something we need and i've been through multiple different layers of working in the music industry where i've had clients that are super hot and people are coming out of the woodworks and then i'm working for clients that aren't super hot and to them to me, they are, to them. And mm -hmm. so people aren't coming out. And I just think it'd be really great if, um, and, I, and this goes for myself as well, you know, when people reach out, that we are all listening. Right. You know, not just, and listening and not ignoring, just giving some people a chance. And, um, and that's, not, that's a mantra I apply to myself as well. Like I, mm -hmm. I try to listen to every single thing that comes in. Um, and, I don't give advice unless it's asked. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm definitely one of those people. I'm like, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna berate someone or, hmm. I'm not a musician either. Like I have right. no musical talent whatsoever. I have no sound engineering talent. I can cook. <laughs> like that's my artistic that's, that's talent. talent. <laughs> yeah, I can feed people, <laughs> you know, but I can't, but I know that like, um, Music is a, is a form of art. It, it, it takes a lot um, of someone's soul to create it. And I think that when people talk down to someone about their music, it's, it's, it's not making them stronger. It's yeah. hurting them. And I don't want to be an industry person. And I know that sounds probably weak and probably like so not music industry of me. But at 20, after 23 years, I don't really, I don't really care how it sounds. I just feel like I want to be able to give um, someone a chance to be heard. And if, if they need more work, then I just tell them, you know, like, good job. Keep working at it. Like, yeah. you know, like, and um, yeah, it's, that's, that's just pretty much, I would love to see that change. And I would love to see, you know, uh, yeah. a lot more women, a lot more people of color. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> Get that. We just nail that. <laughs> <laughs> those are some great changes. I can definitely concur to those. And especially like giving more people, you know, even like a minute of your time when you, when you can. Of course, like sometimes it's, it's busier, but even yeah. just like a quick response, like, hey, I'm working on a ton of projects right now. Um, please hit me back in two weeks. And totally. Like, give, give it a minute then. Because at yeah. least you've acknowledged them versus ignoring their, their email. Yeah. I mean, um, I just find that um, there are people that are out there that are waiting to be heard and, and one response could just change um, that. It just changed your day even. Yeah, you know? so. yeah. leaves them inspired and may, gives, makes them better at what they do and helps hopefully yeah. create that art that makes a difference for them. Yeah, yeah. I love it. 100%. So before I ask you the last question, uh, is there a good way for people to learn more about what you do? Like this is kind of where you can plug uh, whatever you want to plug. Um, oh. You can learn more about Beta or Nito or if you want well, to share Well, Nito's website is super informative and that is where all the information comes. And they on the board are always active and, um, and we have great uh, Zooms being informed uh, every few weeks and have we we know how far we're get, we're coming along with this through those calls and if you're looking for support and you are an independent industry individual i suggest signing up for it go and read about it on the site i won't do justice on how much information is on the website really so go look on the site 
um, the support is there. Um, and there's a lot of people um, struggling uh, and, um, you know, we're, we're all, uh, we're all there to help through that. And that, that membership and that site is there to help everyone. So, um, that's Nito. Theta, you can find out our roster and all that stuff on the website. Um, some people like to reach out to me from the website there. Some people have found me on Instagram and started reaching out to me there. That's always a weird one, but, uh, <laughs> You know, some people start liking pictures of my kids and then send me a press a private message. <laughs> I suggest the website. Yeah. Um, that way you can look at the roster. Our roster is super diverse, which I love because that's so my personality. I like just diverse things in life in general. Um, so you can go listen to some stuff you might not have heard there and you can find out all information on us there as well. Awesome. And I'll share both of those in the, in the show notes as well. Thank you. And before I ask you the last question, just thank you for, for taking the time to be sure. on the podcast and for sharing. Uh, as time flew by, I probably feel like we needed two hours, but um, you know, we'll do around two one day. Okay. <laughs> and that's I, that's, we'll that's around if you're having fun, right? That's what they say. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, thanks for what you do and for giving independent artists an opportunity to um, one work with someone with the amount of experience that you have mm -hmm. and then for just the, what you put out there as well through Nito and through teaching and everything. So thanks for being an, an awesome person in our industry. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and then the question I ask everyone at the end is, what's your definition of making it? Oh, huh. um, I think making it is really relevant to the individual. Um, I don't think it, I don't ever try to um, define someone's view of success. Um, I think that making it is moving people with your art. I think as an industry person, we all have different definitions of making it, including myself. As much as I would love to work for an arena band one day, I don't think I haven't made it because I haven't yet. You know, I mean, um, but I think that my definition of making it is just moving people and, and continuing to have your art grow through that, having fans grow your art, moving people, and uh, and definitely changing the people that are listening to you, and you know, making them enjoy all of the things that you're doing. <laughs>